The hushed undersellers of the Green Griffin Inn. I greet you. Of course, here's a guard in the basement of the Green Griffin Inn. Greetings. The side rooms are viewing rooms if you're here to watch the event. Of course, all these here to compete. Yeah, otherwise, if you're an adventurer, the preparation room is at the end of the hall. Only adventurers are allowed in the preparation room, please. <laughs> Lily hadn't realized that her and Little Red would be, well, granted an audience. How unexpected. As Shorwin makes a feeble attempt at inconspicuously primping herself, the Lady of Murder takes the opportunity to view the viewers, as it were. She'd like to know who'll be watching. Stuffy nobles who are contributing real hard coin towards the stakes is one thing, but she won't stand for, say, a room stuffed with a dozen common voyeurs here out of charity. Each room seems furnished with its own divining pool to scry the contestants. And she know she would have brought the new and left the Black Lake Bar in one of the rooms to message her as to the status of other contestants one of the few spells that would work through the pool. Luckily, no one else thought of it. Hello. Rather a titillating little sport, don't you think? <laughs> For someone who finds blood sports so stimulating, the owner of the Lady Don't Care can't resist recommending the Blood Bowl in Neverwinter being sure to mention it resides in the prestigious nobles' quarter of Black Lake, untouched by the Wailing Death. In the preparation room amidst combat training equipment is an elf, eagerly waving the newly arrived guests to approach. So, this is the latest group of entrants, is it? Very well. My name is Jeru, Master of the Games. Allow me to explain how this will work. It shall cost you 500 gold pieces to be teleported into the dungeon. You'll appear in one of five alcoves located in the southern end. If you wish to return, simply use the platform that you appeared on, or any other platform. But it will cost you 500 gold pieces to be teleported back. Wow, so not only is it a 500 gold piece entry fee, but an additional 500 if you need to come back prematurely. All right. Neither I, nor Mutamon, are responsible for your deaths or the deaths of your companions. If you enter, it is your risk to take. Now then, should anyone wish to enter, approach me with your gold and I'll teleport you within. They can't afford any mistakes. Lily gives Little Red a questioning look. She nods with a nervous smile. So be it. Yes? Are you ready to enter the dungeon? I guess Lily asking Drew if it's really necessary <laughs> to give him the 500 gold, which I'm sure it is. Yeah. Each entry is added to the total that will be given to the winner who makes it through the dungeon. Actually, we were assuming that. All right, giving Drew 500 gold. Excellent. Prepare yourself, my lady, and let the contest begin. Mutamin's challenge. It looks convincingly real. If Lily had to guess, it was probably real crypts at one time. Maybe even Warrens associated with the nearby Luskin Cemetery. Lily smiles, wondering if the nobles watching have ever seen something conjured out of nothing. We'll be done. No doubt they'll be thrilled to watch it feed. You know what, I think actually Bones will probably try to bait. Well, this Adder Cap, who's probably not alone. 
Thing is, uh, we don't really want to stage anything in the hallway. Who knows what else is around? Yeah. Alright, sure enough. I think there's two of them at least. I think we should uh, really prepare anything. <laughs> I think uh, Bones already has resistance. Might as well save these. To battle! Yeah, here we go. But let them come in a little bit. Ah! There we go. <laughs> All right, crew. Let's take them down. See here, yeah, dire spider wanting to come in, so having to go out there. All right. All right, crew. Let's take them down. Otherwise, I think she's probably going to utilize this wand of magic missiles. Wow, there's quite a few of them. Calling bones. Wraith spider. Man. You just follow me. Don't close. Just don't want to get congested in the door. All right. Let's take them down. caps and their grotesque, bulbous black eyes. Like spiders, they feed on incapacitated but still living prey. Lily cuts the edder cap's silk glands located, again like spiders, in its abdomen, a valuable spell component. If she had the expertise, she'd cut the poison glands out from above its fangs as well, as even an ounce is worth up to 1,000 coin on the open market. But. She's never learned how. The Lady of Murder, however, refuses to rush. She'll not run to the finish like some hot-blooded horse in the sport of kings. She intends to win, and with style, a walk to the end, and with as much plunder as Mutaman might have left in his hopes to distract, well, careless contestants. She'll have her cake and eat it too, as it were. I can see a spider at the end of the hole, <laughs> and here's another one. Of course, we need to be awfully cautious because we shall not be defeated. Can't really afford to uh, <laughs> pay an entry fee more than once. Hopefully, it's just the one inside. Can't really tell. All right, here comes this one. Magic missile. Wow. One that I could think that was hiding in shadows. I need you to watch my back. You won't mind that too much, will you? <laughs> yeah. Sharon just got poisoned. <laughs> yeah! Alright. Magic missile. I can't 
believe how many there are. All right. Yeah, this is what we're worried about. Wow, stuff sneaking up behind. Here's <laughs> two more. Of course, Lily slowed. This is not good. <laughs> the camera's, of course, not cooperating. Alright, this is Storm. This wand isn't very powerful. I think we're going to lose Charwin soon. Almost there. Negative energy, maybe. Alright. Man. Mutamin's Challenge, a dungeon of artificial construction made by Mutamin himself to challenge adventurers. Just seemed like the appropriate place to talk about the legendary Tomb of Horrors, which has gained a bit of a reputation for being a killer dungeon or meat grinder as such challenges are called. A lot of people have probably heard about the famous Dungeons & Dragons module, but I'm not sure how many people have actually played it or read it or care to. So I thought it might be interesting to look at some of the individual scenarios which actually give it its reputation. But first, probably a bit of history is in order, at least to understand why it was designed to be so notoriously difficult. The Two Mahars was written by Dungeons & Dragons co-creator Gary Gygax for use in the very first Origins International Game Expo as it was called back then in 1975, held at John Hopkins University. That is, it was meant to challenge expert players. TSR later published it as first edition adventure module S1, the very first of its special S series, and in 1998, they followed up with a sequel, Return to the Tomb of Horrors for second edition. Wizards of the Coast has also released versions for both 3rd and 4th edition, including, I think, a 4th edition version of the sequel. And <laughs> the company, I think, has even published a novel based on the original adventure. The versions I'll be talking about, however, are the original TSR products. And needless to say, there will actually be some spoilers, as the original module has well, a few surprises that would be a shame to spoil if uh, you're planning to play through any of the versions yourself. You just follow me and stay close. In 2004, in issue number 116, Dungeon Magazine ranked Tomb of Horrors as the third greatest Dungeons & Dragons adventure of all time. <laughs> and its sequel, Return to the Tomb of Horrors, came in 10th. And just in case you're curious what the other rankings were, I'll at least list a few. 1985's Temple of Elemental Evil was fourth, with its sequel, Return to the Temple of Elemental Evil, from 2001, tenth. 1983's Ravenloft 
that's the module that eventually spawned its own campaign setting seven years later, came in second. And number one was 1986's Queen of the Spiders, which took players from the underdark city of Errol High St. Lou, all the way to the demon web pits of Loth and beyond, including encounters with fire giant kings like King Snur Ironbelly, Drow, including the villainous Ekalavdra, Zerf Neblin, the Deep Gnomes, Bill Dool Poop worshipping Kuatoa, a Lithid, and even a random encounter with a Lich, not essential to the plot of the adventure. It should be noted that third-party D20 system products were eligible in the judging as well, not just official TSR or Wizards of the Coast offerings. <laughs> Alright, face spotter just came out of nowhere. I need you to watch my back. <laughs> what happened? All right. Phase spiders are aggressive predators that resemble a wolf spider, though typically as large as eight feet long. They shift to the ethereal plane in order to attack their prey off guard. 